Hey guys, it's Justine, and today we are unboxing all of the iPhone 14s. We have the new iPhone 14 Pro Max in the purple, the iPhone 14 Pro in the space black, and the iPhone 14 in this beautiful blue color. We don't have the plus because that does come out later, but right now we're gonna unbox all three of these and check them out. <gasps> oh, look at you. You, oh, I did see it at the event, but like seeing it here in person in my very own studio is so exciting. Look at it. This blue is honestly, I think one of my favorite colors. It's just like the perfect baby blue color. It's beautiful. This does have that all glass back and I like the frosted camera bump right there. It does look really nice. And I really like that the aluminum sides here do not get fingerprints because in the pros, it has the shiny stainless steel finish and you get so many fingerprints on it. With this, even though it is aluminum, no fingerprints. One down, two to go. Oh, look at this. USB-C cable. Here's the iPhone 14 Pro. Look at that box, beautiful, shiny, shimmering, splendid. Oh, the black looks so nice. I really was struggling on which one to order for my personal phone. I did order the silver and I know I probably should have got the purple because it is the new color, but I had gold the last two phones and I decided to go with the silver just because I like having the light camera showing whenever I have a case on it. Ready for the peel. There was like no sound. There was no ASMR peel sound. Okay, this black looks so good on camera. Just moving this around in the light. <gasps> wow. This makes me even more excited to open up the purple. Speaking of which, let's do it. This is our all new deep purple color. Let's check it out. <gasps> Oh no, did I make a mistake? Should I have ordered the purple? Jake, you ordered the purple, didn't you? Mm, it's really pretty. It's so pretty. Oh my goodness. Wow. My sister also ordered the purple. What was I thinking? Look at that. Oh my God, it's nice. It's so nice. My precious. I've never seen the movie. I don't get the reference, but this just looks so pretty. Okay, ready? Time for the peel. I'm like whispering. I don't know why I'm whispering. <laughs> There's nobody else here. You look great. So we now have all three of our devices all unboxed. Look at them. Look at this beautiful lineup. My children. I'm so proud. So now we have our phones. Let's check out the accessories. So here's the iPhone 14 Pro Max leather case. This is in the purple. Ooh, wait, is this purple? Pro Max leather case, oh, it's, this is in ink. This looks nice. It's not really a purple color, but it's more of like a, kind of a navy, but it does have a purple kind of tint to it. There's the case and the phone. As much as I don't like putting cases on my phone, I have to because I cannot be trusted. Now we're gonna open up the leather wallet that comes in the ink color as well. I did some weird stuff with my pre-order. I pre-ordered a pink chalk case with the orange wallet. With the, what was I even thinking? Is that a combo that's gonna look good? I'm not sure, but that's what I ordered. <laughs> So since I would say about last year, I have pretty much been only a MagSafe wallet person. I never thought that this was something that I would ever be able to do. And I've made it an entire year only with this wallet on the back of my phone. It's also made me keep way less cards than I did before. I basically only have one credit card. I have my driver's license and my Tesla key card. And if anybody remembers my video from last year, I went and bought my Tesla instead of filming my iPhone 13 video. I'm so nervous. I've wanted one for a really long time. Okay, it went through. The iPhone 14 Pro is all suited up. Let's close our iPhone 14 Pro. This is the iPhone 14 silicon case. This is in the midnight color. I'm confused as to what the midnight color is because it's not blue, but it's also not black. Like a dark navy blue color. Oh, that looks, that looks pretty black to me. Like this midnight has more of a blue. This looks way more black. Interesting. Okay, let's put on your outfit. Oh, that looks really nice too. Voila. Okay, we've got our iPhone 14 silicone case. 
This is in storm blue. Oh, that's a much darker blue than I thought. My mom would love this color. She loves the color blue. I think I'm gonna have to get her this color iPhone case. Okay, let's put your clothes on. Look at you, looking so pretty. This is a perfect combo. I like that this has like the dark blue around the edge. It kind of complements the light blue, matches the logo, like this looks good. This is a beautiful combination. So here's the previous blue color case that I have right now on my phone. It's almost like the same color, I feel like, as the iPhone 14. Very similar colors. Yeah, so here's the 12 Pro Max blue. That matches pretty close to this new case. Look at our friends. The whole gang is here. Hi, I'm Siri. I'm Siri. I'm Siri. Hi, hi. hi. I'm Siri. Hi. I told Tim Cook that I was ordering the purple phone. You lied to Tim Cook's face? I did, but honestly, at the time, I thought that I was going to get the purple. So which one are you going to get? The deep purple? The deep purple, for yeah, sure. that's what I did. Yeah. Man, I lied to Tim Cook. So here's all three of the phones. The pro model, as you can see, has the always on display. So this is actually not on. I mean, it's on, but it's not. Now it's on. This is our iPhone 14, which does not have the always on display. Look at that, it's cool. All right, we're all unboxed, and now it's time to go out and test them out. So here they are, the new iPhone 14s. We've got the iPhone 14, the 14 Pro, and the 14 Pro Max. With a new brighter display on the Pros with a max nit brightness of 2000, increased performance, camera enhancements, crash detection, and new emergency satellite connectivity. Let's say hello to this year's iPhones. The iPhone 14 has a 6.1 inch XDR Max 1200 nits display, durable ceramic shield, 12 megapixel front facing camera with 49% improved low light. Along with the new 14, they have an iPhone 14 Plus option with a larger display. These do have the same A15 Bionic chip as the iPhone 13 Pros from last year, but with thermal optimizations to basically make this a 13 Pro in a new 14 body upgrade for less. Now the iPhone 14 Pros have an additional telephoto lens that the iPhone 14 does not have. The display is 1600 nits with a max brightness of 2000 and now the display has the ability to be always on. With the new A16 Bionic chip we can shoot 48 megapixel raw photos, an all new action mode to stabilize your video, an improved camera system with up to 3x improved low light on the ultra camera, a new 2x telephoto option, and the most exciting new feature? Turning that cutout into something actually quite useful for notifications and controlling your content. Not only the iPhone 14 Pro models will have the dynamic island, the iPhone 14 still has has the notch. So we're now outside and I've got both of the phones. I have the iPhone 14 Pro Max and the iPhone 14 and we're gonna go around, take some photos, take some videos. We're definitely gonna be testing out that action mode and spoiler, I've already tested it out and I am so impressed. I can't even explain. Can't wait to show you guys. Cinematic mode got an upgrade this year on the 14s. You can now shoot in 4K, 24 frames a second, and 30 frames a second. Now before, you could only shoot in 1080 and you couldn't actually change the frame rate to 24 frames a second. So I'm very excited that now cinematic mode has actually become a little more cinematic. Now on the 14, you only have one lens option, but on the 14 Pro Max, you can shoot in 1X and 3X. So let's see what they look like. So the thing that's cool about cinematic mode is in post, you're able to select the things that you want to be in focus. So right now I am choosing the tree to be selected, that's in focus, and then if I want myself to be in focus, I just tap and guess what? Now I'm in focus. And this is really cool because we're basically able to do this on a phone. Normally you would need all types of high-end lenses and all kinds of gear to make this work and it's just like magic. Now here's a test of the 3x zoom on cinematic and like I said on the iPhone 14 Pro Max you're able to get a 3x zoom. So this is what it looks like in 3x. Now let's go to 1x. And in that same position here is what it looks like in the 1x. This is kind of cool because it'll give you a variety of ways to shoot in cinematic mode.
So macro mode is now a little bit more crisp than the previous iPhone 12. So I'm so excited to test this out because even last year when I first got macro mode, it was so shocking because it's so crisp and you can get so close to things. So like, look how close I am to this cactus. Like I'm, I am, I'm touching it. I also think I might've got stabbed. <laughs> So our macro mode is supposed to give us some crisper photos. So let's take a couple and we can compare it to the iPhone 13. I'm so close to this tree. Like I'm, my lens I feel like is touching it. And this right here is the macro mode. So if I decide that I don't want to shoot in macro, I can turn that off and I'll be able to shoot a regular photo. But if I want that back on, press it and we are in business. Like the thing is the iPhone 13 is still an incredible phone. Like these photos still look really great. So we're back here in the studio and I wanna give you guys a closer look at the dynamic island. And this has been actually super impressive. But now that I've been going back and using my iPhone 13, it's been so weird without it because I actually really miss it. Even though Apple is using this as a way to kind of have a little distraction away from the pill-shaped design that is kind of there because it has to be there for the camera and for the face ID and the infrared, it's actually really, really helpful. So for an example, I will open up some Spotify here. Let's of course listen Listen to a little um, BB Rexa. This new track is fire. So it automatically goes up there and the top right here. And when you press into it, the notification kind of pops down and you can have access to, to pause, to play, make it go away. Now, if we start a timer, for instance, this will also go up to the top and you'll see it's right here. We can have access to the timer. I can stop that over it. I also have really liked this for screen recording because I do a lot of screen recordings all the time when I'm making videos. So having this little screen recorder pop up at the top is super helpful. Another thing that I really like it for is face ID and it'll automatically give all of my info and I can log in. test out action mode and the reason that I have these set up like this is because I wanted to test the iPhone 14 Pros up against each other. So one is going to be recording in action mode and the other is not going to be recording in action mode and we're going to show you guys the difference. So in action mode it's actually punching in slightly so there is a little bit of a crop and because of that you will notice that if you are shooting in ultra wide that there is a little bit more of a crop than when you're shooting in ultra wide when you're not using action mode. Here we go. All right. Action mode. Okay, so these are both in 0.5. Now let's switch to one. So my action mode camera is staying at 0.5 and I've switched the other one to one so you can kind of see the similar crop. <laughs> I'm getting so much activity with these reviews. Okay, Jake, you ready to follow me? No. Let's go. Watching both of these back is so shocking. I mean, even the one that's not in action mode is still pretty steady. But when you compare that to action mode, like I was running really fast. Also something that was kind of cool is even at the beginning where I asked Jake a question and he moved the phones, the action mode one didn't even move at all. Now, most of the time you're not gonna be running around full speed chasing people. So what is a more real world scenario when you would use action mode? Maybe just walking around, vlogging, filming. So now one of these is recording in action mode, which is this one right here. And the other is recording in one X, which would be the equivalent because of the crop. Now this is more of a normal, I feel like everyday scenario, walking around, talking, vlogging. And then if I were to take the camera off of you, Jake, this is what it would look like. There's my friends back there. Here we are. What if I jump? What if I spin around in circles? I don't know. The new iPhone 14 has a 1600 nit display with peak brightness up to 2000. This is so exciting because I'm always using my phone outside and on bright sunny days, especially here in Los Angeles. It's pretty bright and you can still see your display.
Now, one of the things that you need to set up when you get your iPhone is make sure that the formats are correct. You have to go into the camera settings, turn on Apple Pro Raw, and you want to make sure that the resolution is set to 48 megapixels to really take advantage of that full format. And another thing that I recommend, this is my favorite, is the macro control. So you want to make sure that that is on as well because that will let you adjust the macro if it's on or off. And sometimes you might not actually want to use it when you're taking a photo, so it's always best to turn that on. is something new in the iPhone 14 and in the Apple Watches, so if you do happen to unfortunately get into a car accident, the Apple Watch and the iPhone will both be able to alert emergency authorities that there has been an accident and they can be directed directly to the scene. But I think is such an amazing safety precaution and I'm so excited that that is something that they decided to put in all of the new devices this year. Launching in November, you'll have access to satellite communication. So I'm personally very excited about this because I do have a satellite phone that I like to take with me hiking. Now, the one downside to the iPhone satellite communication is it really is only for emergencies. Whereas the satellite that I pay for monthly, which is like $60 a month through Garmin, you can actually connect to the satellites, send text messages, and communicate. So yes, it is for emergencies, but you can still send text messages, whereas only the satellite on the iPhone is for emergency response. So you really can't go and text message your friends using satellite. It's only to contact the authorities and let them know that you have a problem. It's kind of cool how they made this work is they actually will turn your phone into the satellite finder. So as you're moving around, the iPhone will direct you to where the satellite is. It'll then connect you to the emergency responders. They've done something very interesting though with the text messages. They're able to condense the size of that text message to ensure it gets delivered. A lot of times when you're communicating with satellites, it can take 5, 10, 15, 20 minutes to just send a single message up and back down to the recipient. So they've made it that the file size is as small as possible to make sure that your message gets delivered. So that means if I washed up on a beach just like this and I didn't have my phone or any reception, guess what? I could call for help on my satellite device, my iPhone 14, love it. shooting this right now in ProRes, I thought I would test it out. It's kind of amazing that I'm able to shoot ProRes 4K RAW on an iPhone. It's pretty impressive. We're at the beach now. The sun is about to set and I'm testing out the front facing camera because one of the things that they did update is the front facing camera, which like I'm kind of excited about, but also not excited because the front facing is where I like to take those nice selfies. We don't need to see all of the lines. We don't need to see all the details. Apple, you're making things too good now. Ugh. Hashtag no filter.
Something I've been so excited to test out is the low light photography. It has been improved in the new iPhone 14, so we're gonna do a little comparison between the 14 and the 13. Now, it might look like on camera here that there's a lot of light. I mean, I guess we can turn off those overhead lights and see what they look like. So lights on. Oh, wow. That's way darker. It looks like daylight when I hold this up. It also takes faster night mode photos because of the A16 Bionic chip. So you don't have to hold your phone as still for so long. So let's take a couple and, and test it out. We've got the new iPhone over here. And I'm gonna go ahead and take a picture. One, two, three. So it definitely looks, just first impressions, sharper. Hmm. And then three, two, one. Wow, okay, so it already looks way cleaner. The looks better. This one? Yeah. Yeah, this is new. Okay, good. The one on the right looks way better. You can see yeah. the, the blown out. Yep, there's, it is blurry too. I've been having so much fun testing out these phones, and one of my favorite features, which is kind of surprising, is having the always-on display. It's kind of shocking every time I look down at my phone when it's just sitting at the table, and it's on. It's on, but it's not on. I also enjoyed testing out all of the new features like the cinematic mode and the action mode was definitely one of the things that was really shocking. It worked so well, I can't wait to use that more. I'll have a bunch more videos coming out very soon, so if you haven't already, please subscribe, hit the bell to be notified when I post new videos, and I have some other videos here that you may be interested in, Apple related, of course. And with that, I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.